Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. In this class on key concepts in uh, cinema, how many of us are aware of what is the concept of key concepts in cinema? So, if I ask you to give me some words which you think um, without knowing these words, you won't be able to appreciate cinema uh, the way you should be appreciating. What are the words those you that or the concept that you can come up with? Here are a, a <coughs> couple of words that I have just randomly mentioned action cinema, historicals, buddy films, these are genres, these are the categories we have been talking about genres also. So, these are the categories of cinema that uh, 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 that some of us are familiar with. So, of course, these are concepts, but it goes beyond. So, in today's talk and in some of the lectures uh, that will follow, we will be talking about the major concept, the key concepts in cinema. Uh, let me start with talking about action cin uh, film, films or action cinema. So, these are mostly ideologically driven and more often than they know, uh, more often than not, they actually articulate popular beliefs and ideas. For example, uh, take a look at uh, um, uh, a film like Top Gun, where the hero single handedly um, photographs the enemy camps, uh, um, you know, secret documents and pictures. So, uh, the idea is that Americans uh, in the 80s, uh, America was still the superpower. So, we are talking about um, how, you know, an American pilot can single handedly um, break into this uh, so called uh, or supposedly impregnable. Uh, bastion of the enemy camp and actually record or document certain secret uh, uh, papers. So, that is the idea. So, this is definitely ideologically driven that uh, uh, one country, one nation is superior to another that is the concept. Now, um, but this the idea has al always been there in prevalence. For example, the period between 20s and 1930s was uh, the swashbuckling adventure cinema with actors such as Douglas Fairbanks uh, Jr. and Errol Flynn uh, <coughs> ruled the roost. Okay, they were the archetypical uh, or archetypal cine uh, action heroes. From 1940s to 50s, Hollywood witnessed the peak of war and cowboy films such as The Guns of Navarin uh, starring Gregory Peck. The 1960s introduced us to the James Bond kind of cinema, which is often entertaining, though uh, it may be it is often um, ideologically driven. There are camps um, between uh, the Britain, uh, the British camp and its allies, and <coughs> and the enemy, and the enemy keeps on changing. You know, sometimes it's uh, the erstwhile Soviet Union, sometimes it's Afghanistan or uh, you know the far east countries. So, ideologically driven action cinema. Now, now the 70s were marked by the uh, by gritty detective stories and urban crime dramas leading to a string of uh, uh, you know cop drama, cop films such as Bullet starring uh, Steve McQueen and French Connection with Gene uh, Hackman and also uh, Clint, Woods, uh, Clint Eastwood's uh, Dirty Harry and its sequels. Even in the 70s, we can look at uh, how ideologically driven our cinema was with the action movies gaining supremacy, the angry young man, uh, all those uh, mm, uh, action films with uh, Amitabh Bachchan. Okay. So, 1980s was domin uh, were dominated by the likes of uh, 48 hours and also Rambo film series and Lethal Weapon, Die Hard series, etcetera. Um, so, by the time we were in the 19, 1990s, it was a period of sequels and hybrid action such as Total Recall and Terminator, whereas 2000 onwards, 
cinema, action cinema included, science fiction and superhero films such as the Star Wars or the Dark Knight tri trilogy, the Expendables. So, action cinema never goes out of uh, favor. Okay. There is always uh, uh, you know dedicated audiences that look forward to action cinema and that is true in most languages, most nations. So, action films have various subgenres also. For example, we have action horror which combines the intrusion of an evil force um, or event or supernatural or supernatural sorry personage of uh, horror movies with the gunfights and chases of the action genres. We also have a category called disaster films that has elements of thriller and sometimes science fiction films. The main conflict of this genre is some uh, sort of natural or artificial disasters such as floods or earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanoes, etcetera. Uh, disaster films are not too common uh, in uh, India. Occasionally, we have had a film like uh, uh, Ravi Chopra's the, uh, the Burning Train, which was released in the in 1980, so, but that is an ex exception. Um, martial arts is yet another subgenre of uh, action cinema and again extremely popular. It is mainly a far east import and they contain numerous breathtakingly choreographed fight sequences between characters. They are usually the film's primary appeal and entertainment value and these are often me the method of storytelling, character expression and development. Uh, wuxia, the Chinese martial art cinema is also a very popular genre. It is a stylized action fantasy period genre typically set in ancient Asia, particularly China, where skill in martial arts can enable fantastic abilities like flying and uh, magic like abilities. We also have the genre of science fiction action, which is yet another popular subgenre where the emphasis is on gunplay, space battles, inverted weaponry, and other sci uh, science fiction elements weaved into action film premises. In spy films, the hero is generally a government agent who must take violent action against agents of a rival government or terrorists. In superhero films, we have the elements of science fiction and fantasy. They focus on the actions of one or more superheroes who usually possess superhuman abilities and are dedicated to protecting the public. John Wayne, Steve McQueen, Lee Marvin, Bruce Lee, Tom Lawlin, uh, Charles Bronson, Chuck Norris, Clint Eastwood, uh, they are some of the best known action heroes of all time and in recent times we have uh, Mel Gibson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone and uh, uh, Bruce Willis and also uh, more recently with the Bone trilogy we also have uh, Matt Damon who is not typically an action hero, but then he is of course, uh, thanks to the trilogy, he is a recognized action hero. Another concept is um, that of androgyny, which is basically a literary concept in cinema. It is not so well accepted, but then anyway, there are so, some films, particularly art house cinema, where the concept of androgyny is also uh, can also be seen occasionally. So, androgyn in terms of gender identity is a person who does not fit neatly into the typical masculine and feminine gender characteristics of the society. This may be as in fashion, gender identity, uh, sexual identity or orientation and it may uh, refer to biological intersex physicality. One reason for interest in androgyny was the, st uh, was the surge of second wave feminism which uh, encompassed nuclear families, um, working women and their financial independence. It uh, also uh, collapse of traditional and father mother role models. Um, there is a major book by Betty Friedan, The Feminine Mystique published in 1963, which added credence to the idea that pop culture or popular culture has been or had been rather sexist in representation. Some of the features that encouraged the arrival of androgyny into the mainstream were uh, for example, rejection of uh, past social conventions during the 60s, suspicion for cultural norms 
of prior generations and open mindedness towards con unconventional ideas. So, popular culture and music scene embraced androgyny during 1960s to 80s. The characters were dressed in ornate, elaborately colored, fleshy robes and androgyny was seen as an expression of sexual liberation uh, uh, or radicalism. The Nomi song uh, that is Andrew Horn, uh, which was a 2004 uh, documentary about the life of a singer Klaus Nomi and uh, uh, the documentary looks at the early life of, of uh, Klaus Perbel before he became Nomi Klaus. And again, again another important uh, work is Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, which is uh, directed by D. A. Penn Baker in 1973, which is about um, David Bowie's The Great Rock Stars, his uh, androgynous alter ego. Um, and then Todd Haynes has directed um, an art, art house film of sorts, you know, it is called Velvet Gold Mine, which is set in uh, 1970s during the era of glam rock and tells the story of a bisexual glam rock icon uh, pattern after David Bowie. Uh, from here we move on to another concept which is becoming quite popular nowadays which is called uh, anthology film. Now, on anthology film is also called uh, omnibus film or portmanteau film. It is a film consisting of several different short films often tied together by only a single theme, premise or brief un interlocking event which is often a turning point. Sometimes there is a theme such as a place like for example, in uh, New York stories which is a compendium of three films directed, three independent films directed by uh, Scorsese, uh, Coppola and uh, um, Woody Allen. You also have Pari Jatem, which is a collection of 16 shots. Okay, but there is a single theme that runs through. Sometimes the theme is a person, for example, in four rooms, and it can also be a thing, for example, Jim Jarmish's coffee and cigarettes. So, uh, a common feature that is present in each story and serves to bind the characters together. So, the concept of anthology film, however, is not new and it dates back to the early history of cinema. One of the most uh, well known films of this genre is Love at uh, 20, where, where directors such as uh, Truffaut and Andre Wojda and Mars, uh, Marcel Ophuls came together to present vignettes of youthful love, young love and this movie came out in 1962. Sometimes anthology films feature a top level story as a binding agent and a framing device to help establish the framework or narrative for the rest of the films in the feature acting as the major narrative that leads to the various sub stories in the presentation. The format is also an extremely popular one for horror films uh, and it was popularized by 1945 uh, film called Dead of Night. Compared to the problems to be solved in the production of a single narrative feature, those in any anthology films uh, are uh, multiplied in direct relation to the number of stories contained within. There are anthologies of uh, horror films also um, and uh, taking cue from this very popular international uh, product, um, we have also seen a couple of Hindi films in recent times such as Ram Gopal Verma's Darna Mana Hai which was an anthology film and its sequel Darna Zaruri Hai which was uh, released in 2006. We also have Das Kahaniya, which was released in 2007, a compilation of 10 features by different directors such as Sanjay Gupta, Rohit Roy, Neghna Gulzar um, and others. Um, another concept is buddy movie. The buddy movie is a genre in which two people of the same sex, uh, generally we talk about historically uh, we talk about men and uh, 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 there are two men paired. Very rarely we have female buddy films also, but extremely rare, you know we can only think of Thelma and Louise in recent times. So, a friendship between the um, two films, uh, two people or two men is a key relationship in a buddy film. The two men often come from different backgrounds, this is a defining feature 
or have different personalities and they tend to misunderstand one another at least in the beginning. Through the events of the buddy film, they g uh, gain a stronger friendship and mutual respect. Often contrast in personality creates a different dynamic on screen than a pairing of two people of the opposite sex. The contrast is sometimes accentuated. The contrast is sometimes accentuated by an ethnic difference between the two. The buddy film is commonplace in American cinema and it has endured through the 20th century with different pairings and different themes. The buddy films is more common to cinema in the USA than compared to cinema from other western countries which tend to focus on more on male female romantic relationships or an individual male hero. Portrayal of male bonding in the United States um, you know to just to give an idea of the background of this uh, genre. It uh, goes back to 19th century author Mark Twain uh, whose characters Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer as well as Huck Finn and the slave Jim in uh, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn uh, are uh, well known. Okay. So, that is the template on which more buddy films uh, have been based on uh, traditionally. The buddy film is a commonplace in American cinema, but it has also become a popular feature of Hindi films of late. Think Dil Chahata Hai or films like Rock On or Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara and these are um, perfect examples of buddy cinema. So, from genres we move on to uh, certain cinematic techniques such as cinema scope. All of us enjoy watching films in cinema scope technique where uh, there is a big screen and you know there is nothing that can substitute the pleasure of watching a film uh, uh, on big screen. So, cinema scope, cinema enjoyed a large footfall during the second world war, but experienced a decline in attendance post war. I am trying to give you the reason for the growth and development of this new technique. So, the advent of uh, television also added to the drop in ticket sale collections in uh, um, the uh, USA. And this resulted in the big studios competing with television and providing richer cinematic experience. That is what I was telling you about that there is nothing that can substitute cinematic experience and the idea was to provide for a more fulfilling, more satisfying, more uh, you know novel kind of cinematic experience that can compete with TV and can beat TV at its own game. So, uh, soon we had uh, the introduction of 3D cinema and cinerama in 1952. 3D films and cinerama required expensive equip, uh, equipment and projection systems and different screens. Cinema scope required relatively cheaper equipment and projection system. French inventor Henri uh, Chrétien developed anamorphoscope uh, in 1926 which became the basis for development of cinemascope later in 1953. So, some of the earlier films in cinemascope uh, were films such as The Robe starring Richard Burton and How to Marry a Millionaire uh, starring Marilyn Monroe. We also had uh, experiments in uh, cinemascope technique with Guru Das Kagar Ke Pool, which was in 1959. Uh, but however, though people enjoyed the experience uh, cinema scope was not without problems. Close up shots would slightly overstretch an actor's face and it often caused low brightness and grainy image on screen and magnetic stripe prints were twice as expensive to produce as normal prints and not all theatres had the expensive four track magnetic stereo sound systems. So, despite its problems cinema scope thrived and flourished and it is still here and we all enjoy cinemascope films. For example, look at our own Shole, which was heavily publicized when it was first released in the 70s as a cinemascopic adventure. Uh, we move on to another uh, concept which again um, straddles the boundary between cinema and literature counterculture. So, counterculture is a subculture that opposes challenges and rejects significant elements of the prevalent and dominant culture of a land usually 
that which is in line with accepted norms and conditions. It gives rise a voice to the ethos aspirations of a specific population during a specific time period, often uh, dubbed dropping out of the mainstream counterculture movements are in opposition to one or more aspects of prevalent social norms and cultural modes. So, apart from the various socio-political uh, factors, the literary environment of the time too fostered the winds of change and rebellion. America saw the rise of the beat generation in literature with writers like Allen Ginsberg and William Burroughs coming together to specialize in a certain new and radical style of writing that rejected uh, conventional standards and practices and placed an, uh, an emphasis on narrating not just the plot, but um, uh, also the emotional and personal landscape and exper experiments of the narrator or the protagonist. The counterculture movement led to a rise in experimentation with drugs, alternative sexualities and a rejection of ma uh, materialism. We all know um, hippie culture and uh, its influence on cinema, fashion and also the rock scene. The counterculture, uh, counterculture spirit was captured in books, music and films and a seminal film of this period was The Wild One starring Marlon Brando and Lee Marvin. This was a trendsetter for the biker films, you know bikes give uh, uh, wings uh, to uh, a protagonist and that was the whole idea about that was the that was what the film was all about. So, it introduced uh, uh, for the first time a kind of a drifter, rootless, aimless hero in cinema and it also sought to glamorize the young antisocial misfit uh, and uh, uh, anti-authoritarian kind of hero. Those, the film was made in 1953 and then soon a spate of films followed. One of the most influential films of the 60s was Blow Up, uh, Italian director Antonio Nini's film 1966, which is about the sing swinging 60s in London, where um, the beats and hippies and existential cool and colorful fashion, all these things ruled. The core philosophy is that one cannot always trust what we see and uh, the director explores the possibilities and limitation of images here. The films, uh, narrative structure, ellipses, morally ambiguous characters leave us with no clues and set the stage for the kinds of film that were about to come. So, one of the major films, you blow up was a major influence on the so called American new wave cinema and one of the major defining films of this uh, period counterculture cinema and new wave cinema is Easy Rider. Um, so, the characters were named White, Arab and Billy the Kid after the two western outlaws and uh, these two characters played by. Um, Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda, they ride their bikes from <coughs> uh, west to east. So, the philosophy is that to be on the move is freedom and anti-bourgeoisie, which was the uh, philosophy as shown to us by the countercultural uh, exponents such as William Burroughs and also uh, Jack Kerouac and his famous On the Road. So, the philosophy was that anyone who is on the move and has a sense of adventure was free. Uh, another major film of this period was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest um, made in 1975. This is Miller's Foreman's political allegory and it is an adaptation of Ken Casey's 1962 novel. It uh, emphasized the notion that uh, um, by mechanisms and by uh, other uh, figures, society gains control of and su suppresses individuality and natural impulses. The story is set in a mental asylum where we meet the protagonist Randall McMurphy, who pretends to be slightly mad in order to escape a long imprisonment. imprisonment. Okay. So, uh, films such as Five Easy Pieces, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Easy Rider, they all come belong to the so called American New Wave Cinema also capturing the spirit of uh, counterculture movement. In Britain, you had a film uh, such as Performance directed by Nicholas Rogue. 
again a key film of the counterculture movement. We move on to another technical aspect and technical concept which is the emblematic shot in cinema. Um, if you have watched the great train robbery in uh, uh, direct, uh, directed by Edwin Porter and which was uh, released in 1903, one of the earliest examples of cinema. Uh, the film has a shot of gang leader holding a gun poised to shoot and that became an emblematic shot of a western. So, an emblematic shot communicates abstract complex and associative ideas and reveals a special connection between visual elements within the frame. When placed at the start, it is used to establish the narrative, when pla uh, placed at the end, it is a narrative closure. So, one of the most uh, 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 frequently used shot is emblematic uh, shot. I can right away give you example of my left foot where Daniel Day Lewis's huge foot uh, fills the screen okay? and we know why it is so important, why the foot is so important in this film because that is what the film is all about, how this hero who suffers from cerebral palsy can use only one part of his body that is his left foot and how he um, overcomes all odds with the help of his foot. So, the, uh, the extreme close up shot of his foot. So, that is uh, a perfect example of an emblematic shot. Now, moving back again to genres and uh, uh, one of the most uh, uh, recognizable genre in Hollywood is uh, gangster cinema, which is also a precursor to the film Noah. So, the western film for the most of us uh, uh, and is no more than the folklore of the past where uh, while the gangster film comes much closer in time. So, these are the two important uh, American uh, uh, you know uh, more uh, most identifiable, um, uh, identifiable American film genres, uh, the gangster and western. Uh, the gangster cinema historically is influenced by two socio-economic events, prohibition and the great depression. Prohibition from 1919 to 1933 and the Great Depression 1929 to 34. The prohibition in 1919 played an important role in bringing the underworld into national prominence. Regional or big city gangs most of which belong to the ethnic immigrant groups you know Jews, Italians, Irish they took charge of the illicit liquor trade and the gangs quickly grew powerful controlling first neighborhoods then whole cities fighting rival gangs for domination. Um, gangster cinema is often associated with the great American dream. They play on the American myth of a democratic classless society. Gangster, uh, gangster cinema explores the deep social divide in American society. The gangsters become fundamental in a socio-cultural upheaval causing a subversion of traditional values and a period of underworld counterculture which became ma mainstream. We will also note that the gangster hero is the site of two fundamental and opposing American ideologies, a contradiction in thought between America as a land of opportunity and the vision of a classless democratic society. The classic gangster hero invariably comes from the proletarian class and gains access to wealth by stealing. He does not follow the rules and embodies the contradiction in the American society. Therefore, his death is ideologically necessary. Rarely you will find a, a surviving gangster hero in most films. The gangster hero traditionally in Hollywood was mostly played by actors such as James Cagney, Humphrey Bogart and Edward G. Robinson. One of the earliest films and successful films of this genre was Scarface directed by Howard Hawks and starring uh, Paul Muni. This film was also mm, uh, uh, scripted by the great Ben Hecht, journalist turned screenplay writer and it was adapted from a pulp novel. The film was rooted in the then contemporary realities with people and incidents drawn directly from Chicago gangster history. We also need to understand the, the Hayes code in relation to American gangster cinema, which is set uh, um, where uh, the moral uh, and uh, censorship 
it set the moral and the moral censorship code and guidelines that governed the production of most films which were released in USA between 1930 to 19 uh, mid 1960s. The production code spelled out what was acceptable and what was unacceptable content for motion pictures produced for a public audience in America. So, uh, it was known as Hayes code, the first part of the code was a set of general principles which mostly concerned uh, uh, morally or moralities and second part consisted of a list of terms or items which should not be depicted on uh, screen. So, uh, Hayes code also led to censorship of cinema and uh, we all know that most people have mixed feelings about censorship in most countries. Now, let us talk about historicals as a genre. This genre is composed of dramatic feature films in which the primary plot is based on actual historical events or uh, in movies where an imagined plot unfolds in such a way that actual historical events are central uh, to the narrative or to the story. So, all historical films closely follow cause effect relationship in scene construction and follow a linear narrative think uh, Troy for example, think gladiator for example. So, these are um, romantic historical films ok. Uh, of course, they are also fictionalized partly, but they claim to be uh, to have some kind of um, authenticity where uh, as far as historical depiction is concerned. So, um, it should be noted that with the exception of movies such as Intolerance uh, which was made in 1916, uh, 1916 all movies have a definite setting in space and in time. Historical films overlaps with other genres. So, sub genres of historical films are for example, war films, epic films, biopic films, meta historic, costume dramas and also uh, docudramas. From here we move on to icons and iconography. Iconography is the way through which visual motifs and styles can be categorized. It can encompass mise en scene, objects and sometimes even clothes and hairstyles of characters. For example, in Noah one gets a standard look of the farm fatal uh, and in western we identi identify the hero by uh, some of his props. So, again consider a typical uh, Bombay film which often contains shots of the gateway of India, Haji Ali, the marine drive, um, the beach. So, all these are iconography of a place, of a person etcetera. Iconography has a strong connotative power and helps us associate meanings with the image.